what is up guys uh, i'm gonna be pretty quick and straightforward on this one because it's a pretty straightforward thing i'm gonna do and i'm gonna take this opportunity to do uh, a how-to um and keep the blabbing to a minimum so we're gonna change the brake booster this one's a 95 1500 um it's been ls swapped and all that but that doesn't matter to any of y'all um, y'all just want to see somebody change the booster um, there's another dude that did a good video on how to test yours and then also how to do it um, I'm not going to go through the testing part um, if I remember in the description I'll link his video so you can figure out how to test it but basically there's two ways to test it um, to test the internal you have the truck running uh, running for a while and then you put your foot on the brake just apply pressure you don't have to stomp it to the floorboard but put put pressure on it uh, kill the truck within 30 seconds if the pedal starts pushing your foot back your your brake booster has failed the internal test um, it shouldn't push back on you it should just stay where it's at um, the external test basically to tell you if there's a hole on the outside or it's leaking on the outside somewhere is with the truck running and your foot not on the brake kill it um, put your foot on the brake and it should go down quite a bit with another pump it should travel less distance so basically it should be pumping up it should be getting harder each pump within like two or three pumps it should be as hard as it gets I couldn't get this one to push back, but it kind of acted janky, and sometimes it goes all the way to the floor, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't get any different with the external test. So with the, the truck on, no foot on the brake, turn it off, put my foot on the brake, it goes down, and then it pretty much goes down to the same spot. It doesn't pump up or get any harder. So my last thing to think to check is the booster. It's the last thing I haven't touched on this truck. Um, and then as you can see, the check valve's a little janky. Nonetheless, let's get to this brake booster swap. So, first thing I'm going to do is undo the two bolts holding your master cylinder on. Get that off. On mine, I have my wiring that was up here, all tucked up here. I'm going to cut these zip ties, get this wiring away from it. Got a little wiring that goes over. I'll get that pulled up out of the way. I'll get my check valve uh, vacuum line pulled off. And then we'll go inside. So this is basically, imagine the firewalls right here. You're going to have four nuts you got to take loose on the firewall side. And then you've got a little clip that we'll have to get off right here. And uh, I'll get the camera set up in there and get the flashlight and all that so y'all can see that. But it's that's that's the worst part. From what I've seen, getting the clip off sucks. So here we go. Alright, so this is what you're going to look like. Uh, mine's dusty and all that, but you pull your two 15 millimeter nuts off here and here. Pulled my uh, vacuum hose off. Used a pair of channel locks to pinch that clip. Slid it back. Pulled the line off. No big deal. Um, Checked out the back side of my master cylinder. It's looking good. There's not fluid in it or anything. So I think it's fine. So now we're going to move on to the inside. I got my light out. And uh, let's deal with that because it's a whole nightmare apparently to get that clip off. So I'm bringing a shallow, a deep 15 and a swivel. And then I'm bringing a... A 15 ratchet ratcheting wrench that has a flex in it so we'll see if that gets it and then I grab me a couple flatheads for the clip should be it we'll see just get you oriented here's the pedals right we're gonna look up the firewall here mine still has this insulation crap so we got the first one right here there's another one above it let's see if I can get the screwdriver on it from the other side right there see the tip of my screwdriver then you're gonna have one opposite it's on this side and then you've got this one right here you've got four nuts there you got to take off and then 
I don't think I can manipulate the camera to be where it needs to be. So see your rod that comes out of your brake booster right here, this rod, it runs straight above your column right here. And I can't quite get the camera to show it. I don't think. But there's a clip. You can just barely see it in the light. I'll try to circle it when I edit. There's a clip right there. And you got to take a screwdriver from behind. Like so. To try to angle it up. And then I've seen some people come at it from this side. So I'm going to do both. Uh, I'll let you know which way it worked better. And then when I get it off, I'll show you the clip so it makes more sense. All right, folks, we're close. Um, I did pop the pin off. It's not fun to get off, um, just like everybody says. But this is, this is how you're going to be looking at it. It's going to be like this on the rod. Just like this. So what you got to do is get a screwdriver in here like this and pry that little, pry that tooth up right there behind my middle finger, pry that tooth up and then have pressure on it so it'll slide off. And it's not fun, but what I ended up doing was I had a screwdriver in from this side and then I had my hand in there. And I had my hand on it, and then I had my other arm up here twisted all contortionist style. And put just enough pressure on that tab, and I was pushing with my other finger, and the, the clip slid off. So, once you slide the clip off, you're going to have your brake switch here. Um, it's on the end of that rod of your uh, brake pedal. Notice how my brake pedal just flops around now. So it'll actually slide on your brake pedal rod. I'll show you when it's out of the truck so it makes more sense and then uh, we'll go from there. But basically three of the four nuts already off. Um, this little insulation stuff that goes up there, it actually has a, a relief cut in the top of it so you can just pull it down. And I just pulled it down here and got it out of the way so I had more access to the bolts up there. Um, Right there, right there, and then there's two more higher up. But I got one left. Um, this is where if you had a helper, you'd have a helper holding the booster from the firewall side. I don't right now, so I've got a uh, I've got a ratchet in here, all goofy on the uh, the final bolt up there. I don't think. Yeah, there you go. It's about to go, and then the booster will fall out. We'll take a peek at it, I'll break it down for y'all, and then I'll slide the new one in and get it hooked back up. All right, kids, so we got all the nuts off. This is what you're gonna have on the other side. And we should, I'm gonna try to one hand it. There we go, we're out. Yeah, so let's get the new one up in there, slid up in there. Let me see if I can give you all a good view of your uh, brake switch and all that. Yeah. So that's your brake switch and that little shiny little rod right there. That's what you're sliding the brake switch off of. But basically your brake switch will slide on that peg all the way. And then the arm from your booster will go on the outside. So if you're looking at it right now, the arm from your booster will go on the left side of the brake switch on tight. And then you'll slide that clip back on. And then you're in the game. So whew. getting the clip off wasn't fun. But I'll say um, I have some experience dealing with like finicky electrical clips and connectors and stuff like that. So it wasn't that bad. Um, it's one of those deals you spend 10 minutes getting your hand in the right spot and then you spend three seconds 
prying it and getting it. It's just, it's the setup. You got to get your hand in there and get in the right spot, pry on the right spot, all that stuff. Um, and then I will say getting the nuts off is not the greatest time either. Uh, I'm spoiled on an impact and I could not use my impact in that space with a swivel. It's too much of an angle. Um, but on mine, I used my wrench, my ratcheting wrench, broke them loose to where they would spin and then I spun them off by hand. And then uh, the last one up top, I had to keep going with the ratchet because the booster was falling out so it had pressure on it. Um, that's why I was having to wrench that. But if you had a helper or you used a strap or a, a bungee cord right here or something to hold the booster up against the firewall, you could probably just spin that nut off by hand. But Let's get the new one slid in there, get everything put back together, and then uh, I'm gonna fire it up and see if my brakes got any better. All right, guys, and that's that. Um, I know I didn't show much on the inside. Um, hopefully y'all can see me. Um, going back together is way easier than taking it off. Um, Basically what I did was I stabbed it from this side and it kind of kept trying to tilt out. I've seen guys use like a ratchet strap or a bungee cord, bungee cord to hold it up. Um, and then remember, not all y'all are going to be like me. You know, if you have the older style non ABS, you'll have that little proportion valve right here or you got your ABS set up. So you might look a little different than I do, but for me, I just kind of set it up in there and it kept kind of trying to tilt, but I just, you know, set it in there real careful and got it to sit. And then finally I went ahead and put the, put the master on it and just got the bolts uh, started. I didn't get them tied or anything. I just put them on a couple threads just to get it to kind of stabilize it with the lines. And that was perfect. It held it up. Then I went inside, um, started, started uh, the easiest threaded one. Um, spun the bolt on real tight that way the booster couldn't fall out and then just kind of got all the bolts started um, I'll insert a picture here. I screenshot a picture, but I'll make sure to put it in the video This is how you're gonna want to have the arrangement if you forgot when you pulled it apart This is how it'll look You'll have you know your brake pedal with the peg on it You put the rod from the brake booster on the peg first and then you set your brake switch back on there and you'll that little loop on the top of your brake switch that's supposed to snap onto the push rod that comes out of the back of the booster so that's how you're supposed to have it arranged um, once you get that all in there it's super easy to just slide that clip on there's a little you'll see a little groove in that peg that's on the brake pedal um, that's where that clip slides on and you want to kind of wiggle it make sure it's on there because if that thing pops off while you're driving that could be a nightmare um, but that's all there is to it tighten it up uh, I ended up using the deep 15 with a ratchet um, and I actually was able to tighten them all up it wasn't that easy to loosen them with the ratchet but to tighten them all up it worked perfect got them all nice and snug and then came back around here out front, snugged up the two bolts holding the master cylinder on, um, zip tied my wires back up, and then I'm going to pick all my tools up and stuff, and I'm going to fire it up, and hopefully we fix my brake pedal. We'll see. All right, here we go. Let's see, uh, see if we made an improvement or not. one check 
you know if your brake booster is bad so you'll have the truck running you put your foot on the pedal and you'll kill it within 30 seconds if it doesn't push back it's good if it starts to push your foot back from where it's at right now like you start getting pressure on your foot and it's pushing your leg back then your booster's bad on the internal side which i can tell this one's not moving at all my other one would put like a slight bit of pressure on it but not much okay and then another one is oh, safety came on I have a push start, so like this safety is not close enough, it won't start. Alright, so we'll let it build up for a second. tap the brake to kill it so I'm just gonna tap it enough to kick the switch on okay and then we need to push it should go down the next pump should be less which it was and the last pump should be yeah okay so definitely improved a little bit um, I wasn't fully convinced that my old one was bad so I was just like man this is this is the last thing before pulling the drums apart and looks like it helped a little bit we'll have to drive it and see if it bleeds down again then it's for sure in the rear drums the wheel cylinders or something are sucking in air something's going on back there um, but we'll see uh, if you're a subscriber of the channel and you're one of the OGs, stay tuned. Y'all will find out for sure if uh, this fixed it or not. Um, other than that, if you guys are just here for the brake booster deal, uh, appreciate you. You know, hopefully this took care of your issue and you just need a little insight on what you had to do to get it done. Um, and for any of you that see this interior and uh, are intrigued to stay tuned in for uh, the buttoning up of it and making it better y'all go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel um, I also have a bunch of videos I have a playlist of the low country OBS y'all can check out um, all the videos of us building this truck are all in one playlist so you can check them all out or just watch the little pieces that you want to know. We LS swapped the truck. We dropped it. We did this full interior swap. Um, and a few other things. Uh, the NBS master swap. We've done all kinds of stuff. So yeah. Thanks for tuning in guys. Um, that's going to be it for this one. Like I said. Subscribe. Stay tuned for more. And uh, other than that. Peace out. Be human. And we'll see you later.